Mariana Van Zeller from Traffic season three premiered last night. What has it been like over three seasons now to uh, be exploring these new topics? And they're always such new, diverse and different topics that are really hitting a lot of people. Oh, great seeing you, Michael. Thanks for having me again. Uh, it, there is never a dull moment on traffic, that's for sure. Uh, it is, it's, it's an incredible privilege. You know, I've been covering black markets for almost 20 years and to be able to have a platform like National Geographic and have a show that is entirely devoted to black markets is really, really special to know that it's having an impact and that people are watching. There is a whole half of the world's economy almost that are these black and gray markets, and yet we know so little about them. So, so to be able to have this opportunity of gaining this unique, very rare access into the darkest, most secretive corners of our world um, is, is really special, and I, I don't take it for granted. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yesterday's episode, which is the premiere episode, Black Market Organs, was a very fascinating piece. A, a lot that I didn't even know or even heard of. What was it about going down these lines and talking, telling the story about these black market uh, sales of organs and tissue? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a difficult one for us, a really difficult, because you never know, there hasn't been a lot reported on organ trafficking. There are rumors that it exists. There have been Hollywood depictions of it. There are some reports in some corners of the world, but what I had, I did no idea that it was happening so close to home. Um, and so when we started looking into this trade, first of all, it was really difficult to get people to talk to us as always. But once they actually did, it was also sort of difficult in some situations to corroborate what they were saying, which for us as journalists is one of the most important things to make sure that what you're reporting on is actually truthful. But when to reporting on something that is as dark and, and horrific as organ trafficking, um, it's really hard to know if these people are actually telling us the truth when they're talking about cutting bodies open and removing these organs. Um, so there was a difficulty there as a journalist that we very much put out in the open and that became part of the episode as well. But in the end, unfortunately, it's one of these situations where unfortunately what we found out is that it is it does exist and that there are a lot of victims of this organ trafficking um, trade out there. Yeah, and the doctor that you interviewed was very fascinating because it's he was teetering a thin line of what he could he wanted to tell you and what he didn't want to tell you how hard was it to get to, to kind of get him to open up to trust you because this one seemed very hard to build that trust yeah it was crazy so we had traveled from Colombia to Mexico several times we'd waited around for days and days for people who were supposedly who were doctors or involved in the medical side of this trade and who never showed up so we this was the 10th or 15th time we were trying and yet we had been waiting around that hotel for days until he showed up so we were kind of in disbelief and sort of excited when we finally got somebody who's a doctor who's going to tell us what how he does what he does and so when he sat down I started the interview thinking okay he's agreed to this he's going to tell me and be truthful and once we started turned on the camera something ha different happened where he actually started not telling me the truth and you could see visibly that he was uncomfortable so that interview lasted I think over an hour and a half where I was trying to figure out a way to get him to open up and to trust us which isn't easy but in the end I think a lot of times what they don't say is actually more revealing than what they do say and that was that was case in point exactly exactly especially when he's talking about who he works for it seemed like it, you were tried so hard to get him to kind of open up, not exactly say who he's working for, but to give an idea. And he just wouldn't, like he, you could tell he wanted to, Yeah. yet he just closed down. Yeah, you know, it's the fine line that exists between my job as a journalist to try and push people to the limit, but also making sure that by doing so, I'm not actually endangering them or, you know, their lives. Um, in that situation, you know, when you, it's, the well-known rule in Mexico and in many countries where there's narco trafficking, which is you don't you don't ask the cartel question, you don't ask which group you belong to, you don't ask for the name of the cartel. The less you know, the the safer you are. Mm -hmm. And so I was asking too many questions, and there's a point where you just have to understand, okay, this is actually dangerous for this person if he answers this, and something can happen to him because a lot of these people are unwilling collaborators in all of this. Yeah, yeah, and that. And at the end, 
that one the way it was end with uh the person who actually bought an organ and the way he ended with that question what would you do to stay alive or for your or you mentioned are your kids that was such a it, it it's a thought provoking question you got an industry like this but how but you want to survive for your kids you want to survive for your family yeah absolutely the decision is tough how was that going it's interesting because that is my biggest goal for this whole show for every episode i want people to try it's the biggest the best tool we have as filmmakers and journalists is to get people around the world to connect uh with people that they think they have nothing in common with to for that one hour that you're watching traffic you can place yourself in the shoes of the people that are edges of our society the people the most stereotyped people in our society right i think that's a very powerful tool in, and even though I have it top of mind all the time, when I sat down with him and he said, what would you, and he asked me a very simple question. I mean, what would you do if you needed a, you know, an organ or if a loved one? And I, I thought about it. If my son or my husband or anyone close to me or myself needed an organ, what would I do? I, I think it's such a po- important conversation starter for all of us, not just, just that particular interview, but in general, the series. It's about that. It's about the opportunities that we're given and what would we do in those situations? Exactly, exactly. And let's talk about next week's episode, LSD. <laughs> Something that's been around for decades and you're del- delving into it. What was it about this ep- this upcoming episode that you really wanted to try the to tap into the hallucinogenics and the whole story behind it? Yeah, I mean, psychedelics are all around us. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everyone seems to be doing psychedelics this these days. And it is no longer sort of considered just drug. These drugs are no longer considered just drugs that you're taking as uh, party drugs. They're being used in psychotherapy around the world. They're being legalized more and more around the world. They're being consumed. They're being studied. Um, and I think the the beneficial side of it was really fascinating to me as well when we started looking into it. And so when we started looking into psychedelics, we realized that sort of the one drug that everybody that has psychotherapeutic benefits, but yet everybody's still sort of afraid of is LSD. And uh, we found out that it is only a handful uh, of people that actually make LSD in the entire world, which is crazy. It's incredibly difficult to make. Um, and expensive to make. And there's only a handful out there of you know chemists that know how to make this stuff. So it's led us in on a pursuit of trying to find one of these incredibly secretive and even hermit um, chemists who make LSD. Yeah, and I think that's what's going to pull a lot of people in, especially it's going to pull generations in because there's people who have been exposed to it and exposed to it through their family members. So I think you're going to tell a story that's really going to touch a lot of people. Yeah, I hope so. And we did. We actually spent time with a uh, Iraq uh, war veteran who has been using LSD to his benefit, and he suffers from PTSD. And, uh, you know, and this drug has been incredibly helpful for him. Yeah, now I don't have much time, so I only have a few more questions. Uh, you're already working on season four. That's How do you push the envelope to do even more and to find, there's a lot out there. So it's yeah. not that hard to find new topics, but for season four, how is it? Yeah, it, it isn't hard. I mean, I, I don't think people realize just how prevalent uh, black markets are and how they really are not only all around us, but there are a lot of them out mm-hmm. there. Um, so we actually have a long list of stories that we still want to tackle. Um, I think the difficult or the challenge always is, uh, you know, on a on a on a weekly basis, in terms of what the viewer sees, we are gaining access, unique and rare access to these worlds. So the gaining of access, it, the finding the subjects is not difficult. It's the gaining access to the worlds that is incredibly hard. So there are topics out there that I really want to explore, but haven't figured out a way in yet. Um, and that that really is what takes ninety percent of our time. Right, right, Mariana. Thank you so much for stopping with us again. The, your work as a journalist is just uh, amazing, and I'm, we always push our students at Cal State Fullerton and Cal State Northridge to watch your show to learn some great gener- journalistic techniques, uh, especially if they're going into hard news. So thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Michael. T- really appreciate it. Um, and we'll see you next time here on News by Muse. <laughs>